Okay, so today we're, this is the video that's going to accompany the web post um, or the blog post regarding the 10 supply error. Uh, and that error can be um, fairly, I don't want to say generic, but it can give 10.00.00 supply error and it will actually say supply error. Sometimes, sometimes it will just give the error. Sometimes you'll get a 10.00.03. And a lot of times when you get those numbers, it's related to um, a color cartridge, if you have a color printer. So the 03 was, it would generally pertain to probably the magenta cartridge because it usually ends with a 3 on the part number of the cartridge. So, um, for example, um, the CB543 is a magenta toner cartridge for the CP1215 uh, and uh, 1518 series machine. Uh, so if you get that error in that machine, generally it's going to be your magenta cartridge causing the problem. Um, and again, you can get these errors straight out of the box when you take a printer or a cartridge out of the box. And you can also get it halfway through the cycle. All of a sudden it'll just start erroring out. Um, and the cartridge, it's, uh, the, the, the chip itself is a dummy chip, so to speak. It doesn't have any data on it. Um, it only starts to get data when the printer starts to read to it. So generally when you put it in the machine, um, the machine will recognize that the, the, t uh, the chip is empty and it'll start to read data to it and it'll say, okay, this is a, uh, an, a new cartridge. If you put a new chip on during the print cycle, um, it still may think that it's full, but it will sh generally it will adjust through the density um, sensors and figure out that, oh, it's not a full cartridge and it should get itself back in the line. But, you know, we have three different, uh, um, chips here. This is for your lower end machines, usually your entry level smaller cartridges. Um, and this machine here doesn't have any adhesive backing like these two machines or these two toners here or these two chips here. Uh, this generally slides in um, and these are easily to these are easily damaged. So when you pull them out, you can pull them out with a with a pliers, but when you put them back in, um, like on this machine here, or this cartridge here, you have, it's like two little rail ridges that they slide back into. And you make sure you want to put it in correctly. So when you pull it out, make sure you're taking note of which way is in. Usually, um, and this may be hard to see because I'm filming this one on my little GoPro, GoPro camera. I've had some issues with my other ones, but the writing is generally upside down and that's how you want to put it in. Usually I always say tabs to the left as you're looking at it. Um, so uh, that's the smaller end stuff. And again, you can see the exposed uh, circuitry on the back there. You want to just be careful of that. So when you put it back in, just be real careful and slide it in. You might have to wrestle with it a little bit, but just be patient. You know, It should only take a couple minutes to get it out and back in. Um, and those are the two contacts right there. The gold is where the chip, uh, the reader inside the printer actually attaches itself to to read. Uh, and then you have this, this style chip here uh, is got the adhesive backing that sticks onto it. It's always got that little notch. You can kind of see that corresponding notch here. Some of them will have these little black dots basically encasing some of that electronic um, circuitry that you see on the front side of this board. Uh, but you do have that gap or that little, um, uh, not gap, but uh, little cutout that corresponds the same right here. Uh, so same thing, just pull the adhesive backing on, um, line it up with the uh, little cutout and, and just you know put it back into place. Uh, and then we have the old style here. This goes back about a decade now or so. Uh, these are the, you still have a chip in it. And I, I think, th I believe these ones might be infrared, how they read the, uh, the chips back and forth. So if you pop this little casing open, you'll see a, a similar chip like that. Same thing, it has the adhesive backing on the back to stick it to whatever chip you're going to put it on. A lot of these are like 4600s. The HP Color LaserJet 4600s have these. And each chip has their own specific, uh, uh, each cartridge has its own specific chip. And then the HP, I believe the first HP cartridge to ever have a chip was the HP 4100. 
and that also has a similar chip and a lot of times you see this little notch out here in the corner all you have to do is match that up with the cartridge and right here I have an HP 4600 that kind of shows that this one is an OEM chip I believe and you can see the notch out right there and just put it back on put it in and you should be good to go like I said it will take a little while to kind of readjust itself back to how full the cartridge is um, and it should be fine thereafter. The one thing you want to pay attention to in the 4100, um, it'll ask you all the time when you put a cartridge in if it's a new cartridge. If you just scroll through it right away and don't really pay attention and just want to get the prints going, you, it's probably going to continue to read low cartridge because now it doesn't know. Like in, in, At that time, I don't think the technology was necessarily smart enough to understand or it wasn't built in to say oh this is a this is a chip that has no data on it um, the printer knows that it is but if you don't tell it that it is then it just thinks okay I just pulled the cartridge in and out and it'll still continue to read low, to low toner we get that all the time with clients that don't you know they just put the cartridge in after they put a new one in they don't really look at the display panel and say oh it's asking me and I need to go through the the proper procedures to tell it that it's a new cartridge and then they say oh I just put a new cartridge in and it's saying toner low still um, so you get all that kind of stuff as well so those are the three major types with HP um, most of them are all the same still most of the newer ones like I said still have this kind of technology on it um, and even some of the larger ones um, have that technology built into it now uh, and the 4700s do as well so um, that should be everything for covering that. Uh, if you have any questions, call the office. Uh, a lot of times if you have the failure, middle of print, we'll just send you a chip and put it on. Again, a very simple uh, procedure to remedy and fix. Um, so again, if you have any questions, call the office, toll-free, 888-505-5004.